A Course of Experimental Philosophy by J.T. Desaguliers, Fellow of the Royal Society, Chaplain to His Grace the Duke of Chandos. All the knowledge we have of nature depends upon facts. For without observation and experiments, our natural philosophy would only be a science of terms and unintelligible jargon. But then we must call in geometry and arithmetic to our assistance, unless we are willing to content ourselves with natural history and conjectural philosophy. For as many causes concur in the production of compound effects, we are liable to mistake the predominant cause unless we can measure the quantity of the effects produced, compare them with and distinguish them from each other, to find out the adequate cause of each single effect and what must be the result of their joint action. When Monsieur Descartes' philosophical romance, by the elegance of its style and the plausible accounts of natural phenomena, had overthrown the Aristotelian physics, the world received but little advantage by the change. For instead of a few pedants, who most of them being conscious of the ignorance, concealed it with hard words and pompous terms, a new set of philosophers started up, whose lazy disputation easily fell in with a philosophy that required no mathematics to understand it, and who, taking a few principles for granted, without examining their reality or confidence with each other, fancied they could solve all appearances mechanically by matter and motion and, in their smattering way, pretended to demonstrate such things. As perhaps Cartesius himself never believed, his philosophy, if he had been in earnest, being unable to stand the test of the geometry which he was master of. It is to Sir Isaac Newton's application of geometry to philosophy that we owe the rooting of this army of Goths and Vandals in the philosophical world, which he has enriched with more and greater discoveries than all the philosophers that went before him, and has laid such foundations for future acquisitions that even after his death his works still promote natural knowledge. Before Sir Isaac we had but wild guesses at the cause of the motion of the comets and planets around the sun, but now he has clearly deduced from the universal laws of attraction the existence of which he has proved beyond contradiction, and has shown that the seeming irregularities of the moon, which astronomers were unable to express in numbers, are but just the consequences of the actions of the sun and earth upon it, according to their different positions. His principles clear up all difficulties of the various phenomena of the tides, and the true figure of the Earth is now plainly shown to be a flattered spheroid higher at the equator than the poles, notwithstanding many assertions and conjectures to the contrary. Our incomparable philosopher has discovered and demonstrated to us the true nature of light and colours, of which the most sagacious and inquisitive naturalists were entirely ignorant. For while they sought for the origin of colours in the mixture of light and shadow, Sir Isaac Newton found that they were congenial with the rays of the sun and contained in light itself, the surface of coloured bodies serving only to separate from one another those rays that make different colours, by absorbing some and reflecting others to our eyes so as to produce those different sensations on which the pleasing variety of coloured objects depends. His optics, besides the properties of light, contain a vast fund of philosophy, which, though he has modestly delivered under the name of queries, as if they were only conjectures, daily experiments and observations confirm, a notable instance of which may be seen in the Reverend Dr. Stephen Hale's excellent book of Vegetable Statics, which, by putting several of Sir Isaac queries out of all doubt, show how well they were founded. I pass over Sir Isaac Newton's noble inventions in pure mathematics, justly admired at home and abroad, because though they have been of great use in the discovery of the causes of natural phenomena, they are foreign to my present subject, which is physics, whose knowledge I am in this course endeavouring to convey by experiments, 
not only where things have been discovered that way, but even where they have been deduced by a long train of mathematical consequences, having contrived experiments which step by step bring us to the same conclusions.